Welcome to the Michigan Veterinary Specialists Educational Series for veterinarians and the pet owners they serve. This video has been made possible by the support of Pfizer Animal Health. This video focuses on an increasingly common surgical technique called arthroscopic surgery. This minimally invasive procedure is used to diagnose and treat conditions of joints in dogs. Arthroscopy has been used during the past two decades in horses but over the past 10 years, instrumentation has been developed to perform this type of surgery in dogs. Because this surgical procedure is less painful and has shorter recovery times than traditional surgery, board-certified veterinary surgeons prefer this technique. A common cause of front leg lameness is elbow dysplasia. At our hospital, we commonly see this problem in Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, Rottweilers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, Newfoundland Dogs, St. Bernard's, and German Shepherds in addition to other breeds. Most dogs are within their first year of life when clinical signs of elbow dysplasia first appear. However, some dogs are mature when the problem is diagnosed. The elbow of a dog is similar to a human elbow joint. The ends of the humerus, radius, and ulna bones come together to form the elbow joint. The ulna has a bony projection called the anconeal process. This part of the elbow maintains stability of the joint as it rides in a groove in the bottom of the humerus bone. Another important bony prominence of the ulna is called the medial coronoid process. This process bears the weight of the inner side of the humerus bone when a dog walks and runs and can break off when a dog is young. The humerus bone has a region at the bottom of the bone called the humeral condyles, which is covered by cartilage and forms the top part of the elbow joint. The humeral condyle is susceptible to developing osteochondritis desiccans. Elbow dysplasia is a generic term which simply means abnormal development of the elbow and can result in four potential conditions. These include the fragmented coronoid process, ununited anconeal process, osteochondritis desiccans, and a poorly fitting joint, also known as elbow incongruity. The most common condition that we see in our practice is the fragmented coronoid process. In puppies, the medial coronoid process is very soft and susceptible to breaking off. As a puppy grows, the radius bone may not grow as fast as the ulna bone. The result is excessive force being applied to the medial coronoid process with subsequent fracturing of this part of the bone. The loose bony fragment subsequently damages the elbow joint and causes arthritis. The ununited anconeal process is the second condition associated with elbow dysplasia. The anconeal process is made of soft cartilage in dogs less than 20 weeks of age. If there is an abnormality in the development of the elbow joint prior to 20 weeks of age, the anconeal process may break off. The loose piece of bone damages the joint and causes lameness. Commonly, these dogs also have a concurrent fragmented coronoid process. The third condition is osteochondritis desiccans, or OCD. This problem typically affects the bottom part of the humerus bone. To illustrate the development of OCD, the front view of the elbow will be shown. The radius and ulna bones have been removed to simplify the illustration. The bottom of the humerus is normally covered with cartilage. During growth of a puppy, the deep layer of the cartilage matures into bone. If this fails to occur, the cartilage becomes very thick and susceptible to damage. The result is a loose flap of cartilage in the joint with resultant arthritis. The fourth condition is elbow incongruity or a poorly fitting elbow joint. Take note of the wide space in the elbow joint, a sign of elbow incongruity. This causes the surface of the elbow joint to wear out and develop arthritis. Clinical signs of elbow dysplasia include bobbing of the head when a dog is walking or trotting. The lameness may be more noticeable after a period of rest or with exercise. If both front limbs are affected, a shifting forelimb lameness may be seen. In order to relieve pressure off the sore portion of an elbow, a dog afflicted with elbow dysplasia will frequently externally rotate the forelimb in order to shift weight off the inner compartment of the elbow joint. Another common sign of elbow dysplasia is swelling and pain of the elbow joint. Prior to surgery, x-rays of the elbows are made. Sedation may be needed to allow for specific positioning of the elbow. Early in the course of the disease, signs of elbow dysplasia on the x-rays may be subtle and may include changes of density of the bone. As the problem progresses, bone spurs become obvious. 
A diagnosis of the ununited ancaneal process is obvious on plain X-rays. Frequently, a fragmented coronoid process, OCD, or incongruity is not visible on plain X-rays. Because of this, additional diagnostics such as CT scan or diagnostic arthroscopy are needed to diagnose the problem. Both of these tests require general anesthesia. Prior to CT scan or arthroscopy, blood work is performed to ensure that the best type of anesthesia has been selected for the dog. A comprehensive blood profile, including a CBC and chemistry profile, should be run to check internal organ health. Our trained professionals strive to reduce the risk of anesthesia by using the safest anesthetic agents available, using a ventilator to assist the patient's breathing during the surgery, and monitor the patient's vital signs during the entire procedure. In some cases, a CT scan will be recommended. A CT scanner will make cross-sectional images of the elbow joint, thus allowing the surgeon to evaluate the inside of the elbow prior to surgery. In this example, the yellow line denotes the level of the cross-sectional CT image of the elbow as seen on the left. The CT image shows a loose fragmented coronoid process as shown by the arrow. CT will accurately diagnose the underlying problem in 85% of the cases. Arthroscopy, which involves inserting a thin telescope into the joint, is initially used to accurately diagnose a problem. Because of this, the patient may not need a CT scan prior to receiving arthroscopy. If the diagnosed problem, such as a fragmented coronoid process or OCD, can be corrected with arthroscopic instruments during the procedure, the surgeon will do so. The benefits of arthroscopic surgery include faster recovery and less pain, which means that your dog may be released from our hospital on the day of the surgical procedure. In addition, the surgeon will be able to explore the joint more thoroughly versus traditional open surgery. This is an arthroscopic image of a loose fragmented coronoid process. Note that the cartilage has been damaged on the adjacent humerus bone. Arthroscopic surgery, a minimally invasive procedure, involves the placement of a telescope, which is attached to a camera, into the elbow joint. Another opening is made into the joint to allow insertion of arthroscopic instruments. In this patient, a fragmented coronoid process is identified. Note that the loose piece of bone can be moved with the arthroscopic probe. Using a pair of arthroscopic forceps, the loose piece of bone is grasped and twisted to release it from the joint capsule and then is removed from the joint. An OCD flap is another condition that is best treated with arthroscopic surgery. The OCD flap of cartilage is grasped with an arthroscopic instrument and is liberated from its attachment on the humerus bone. The raw exposed bone will then heal, allowing the pain in the elbow to subside. After surgery, medication is administered to control pain. There are multiple options available to control pain. The surgeon will tailor the pain management plan to each dog's needs. While in the hospital, injections of morphine or another narcotic may be given to reduce any discomfort the pet feels. Another option is a fentanyl patch placed on the pet's skin. This will continuously deliver a narcotic through the skin during the first four days after surgery. In order to control your pet's pain at home, an oral narcotic may also be prescribed. The most common oral narcotic used in our practice is tramadol. This medication is tolerated well by most patients, but may cause an upset stomach, agitation, or constipation. A medication such as gabapentin may be prescribed to help block the amplification of pain within the spinal cord. A non-steroidal such as Rimadol, Deramax, Prevacox, or Medicam may be prescribed to reduce the inflammation in the operated elbow. Potential side effects of these drugs include a loss of appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, and dark-colored stools. If any of these side effects are noted, discontinue the medication and contact one of our doctors at Michigan Veterinary Specialists. Rehabilitation therapy is also very important after the surgery. For the first two days after the surgery, a cold compress, such as a bag of frozen peas or a chilled gel pack, applied to the surgical site will help reduce bruising and swelling. A thin towel should always be placed between the elbow and the cold compress to make your pet more comfortable. Starting on the third day after surgery, a warm compress should be applied to the elbow prior to doing range of motion exercises on the limb. A warm compress can be a gel pack, a wet hand towel in a plastic bag, 
or microwaved raw rice in a cloth bag. Make sure the warm compress does not burn the skin by placing a thin towel between the skin and compress. Range of motion exercises are performed to regain normal range of motion of the elbow. Extend the elbow and hold it in this position for 5 seconds. Then flex the elbow and hold it in this position for another 5 seconds. 20 repetitions should be done 3 times a day. Checking the surgical incisions daily for signs of infection is important. Typically no external sutures are used. The pet should not lick the incision because this will delay healing and may cause infection. If the dog licks the incision, a solution of two parts bitter apple and one part liquid heat can be applied around the incision. If this doesn't work, an Elizabethan collar should be used. Exercise should be restricted during the first three months after surgery. During the first six weeks after surgery, the patient is allowed outside on a leash for elimination purposes only. Running, jumping, and climbing stairs is not permitted. If unavoidable, the dog may climb stairs with the assistance of a sling. If a home has slippery floors such as tile, hardwood, or linoleum, then throw rugs or strips of outdoor carpeting should be used to cover these surfaces to prevent the pet from falling. During the seventh week after surgery, exercise should be limited to leash walks. A 10 to 15 minute walk is allowed three times daily and can be gradually increased to strengthen the limb. Arthroscopic surgery allows for early use of the limb after surgery. Nearly all patients will walk on the limb after surgery. By two weeks after surgery, most dogs will bear a moderate amount of weight on the limb, and by two months after surgery, most dogs will have mild lameness. By four months after surgery, the healing of the elbow will have plateaued. If your dog shows signs of stiffness in the limb at this time, long-term medications will be needed to help relieve signs of arthritis. Your pet should return for an evaluation of the limb in two weeks. A final evaluation is made in two months after surgery. All patients that have elbow dysplasia will have some degree of arthritis. These dogs should be kept lean as excessive weight can make an arthritic joint more painful. Most pet owners are guilty of overfeeding their furry companions. A consultation with your veterinarian is important to assess the body condition of your dog. Your pet should have an hourglass figure when viewed from the top and the ribs should be covered by a light coat of flesh. A weight management program can be formulated by your pet's veterinarian. Prescription diet food along with the correct meal proportions will be recommended. Slentrol, a medication that can give your pet a kickstart to lose weight, may be the best option. Most dogs handle this medication with minimal side effects, but your pet must be monitored by a veterinarian when on this medication. There are many reasons for choosing a surgeon at Michigan Veterinary Specialists. Their surgeons have completed an additional four years of training beyond their Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree at a surgical institution and have completed testing required by the American College of Veterinary Surgeons. Successful arthroscopic surgery lies best in the hands of our experienced surgeons. Their facilities have state-of-the-art equipment, licensed technicians, 24-hour care of patients by a technician and doctor, advanced methods of pain management, and 24-hour availability of technicians and doctors to address concerns that you may have after the surgery. Please call Michigan Veterinary Specialists at 248-371-3713 in Auburn Hills or 248-354-6660 in Southfield to schedule an evaluation.